Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the BuzzFeed Unsolved book tag. Uh, I'm a big fan of BuzzFeed Unsolved, my, my partner and I watch a lot of it. I was actually watching it when I discovered this tag, I saw that the introverted reader had posted a take on this. It was originally created by the YA room, nobody tagged me but I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, everybody's videos are linked to down below. Let's get into it. Dane reads. So, question one. Shaniac, a book you don't think is deserving of its hype. Oh, um, that's easy. It is uh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, um, which I didn't like at all. Um, my friend Neil hated it so much, he actually just threw it out the window when he'd finished reading it. Um, it's, it's terrible. Um, and it has some weird, rapey, insular love story to it. Question number two, Bugara, a book that chilled you to the core. Probably The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty, uh, that comes to mind. A lot of bits in that novel just freaked me right out. I mean, the book, the, the movie is scary. Um, the book is scary in a different way. The movie is, you know, I guess horror movie scares. The book is more almost like psychologically scary. Um, and it's, I've always remembered a, a line um, from it right at the beginning, which is, like the brief doom flare of a thousand dying suns that registers dimly on blind men's eyes, the beginning of the horror passed almost unnoticed. That line's just always stuck with me. Question number three, Shipfish. A book you're not sure where you stand on. Ooh, interesting. Um, I don't know, I tend to have pretty fixed opinions on most of the books that I read. Maybe like the Bagad Vita or something like that. It's probably some religious book that I don't know too much about. Like the Talmud. I don't, I don't know where I stand on it because I've never read it. Um, I mean, I'm not one for religion, organised or otherwise, I'm just not religious at all. Um, I'm a bit of a sceptic, a rationalist, um, but I would like to read more religious books. Question number four, hey there demons, it's me, ya boy, a book that kept you up at night. Probably uh, Dracula by Bram Stoker, the first time I read this, it was actually uh, an ex-girlfriend's like parents, family house or whatever, um, and they were quite strict and um, old school, so this was while we were at university, you know, I think we were both early 20s. Um, but when I stayed there, I had to sleep downstairs and they had this open plan downstairs so that, you know, the entire bottom floor, you could see the whole thing. So I was just like sleeping down there with all these like windows pointing at me and I couldn't see what was on the other side of them. And I was reading Dracula and it just freaked me out and I couldn't sleep. So I just spent the whole night lying there reading Dracula and trying to see if anything was coming to get me through the uh, windows. Question five, wheeze, or I guess like... <laughs> A book that made you laugh out loud. Probably anything Terry Pratchett, um, Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett maybe, is um, coming to mind because I recently read All the Discworlds A Stage, which is three stage plays based on Pratchett's Discworld novels. And Feet of, the, Feet of Clay was one of the three that were included in there. But it was also the first Discworld novel that I read and it's what got me hooked. Um, so yes. Question number six, Mothman, a hyped fave. I love Mothman. Um, the Mothman episode of BuzzFeed Unsold is probably one of my favourites. Um, I would love to go to Point Pleasant, Virginia one day. But anyway, uh, a hyped fave. I don't know if necessarily a fave. Um, like The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, that was very good. That didn't disappoint. Um, that's probably the best of all of the booktube um, like darlings that I read. Either that or like The Hunger Games trilogy by Suzanne Collins was also very good. Um, I think those are the two that really stand out as actually being worth all the hype that they get, you know? Question number seven, Holy Water, a book you'd protect with your life. My, like no book is worth life, like my life or anyone else's, you know? I would sacrifice any of my books to save the life of some random person I'd never meet and who wouldn't know that I'd done it, you know? Um, because life is more valuable than books. Um, unless you, you're talking about like a book that would just never have come into existence and even then I can't think of one. Um, but I guess I would say um, Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, also known as uh, The Golden Compass in the United States. It's just my favourite book of all time and the book that got me into reading. Question number eight, Demons. A book you're too scared to read. Well, there, are, there aren't any. I'm not a pussy. <laughs> Which, you know, sorry, that is not very feminist of me because, as we all know, the feminist reading of it is that a pussy, pussy is like a strong, dick's a weak, like a kick in the dick. That's it, you're done. A kick in the pussy is gonna hurt, but you know, pussies give birth to things. Dicks just, f you know, flop away. They flop away like a little gherkin, like a mole rat, naked mole rat. So, anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but a book you're too scared to read. 
There isn't one. Question number nine, but for now this mystery will remain unsolved. A book you needed more from slash didn't want to end. <sighs> I know that's a tough one because most of the books that I've enjoyed the most, part of the reason why I enjoyed them so much was that they were perfect and the perfect length, you know? For example, again, going back to His Dark Materials, the book, uh, the trilogy that made me fall in love with reading. I'm not a fan of the prequels, the Book of Dust, and um, even some of the, uh, you know, expansions like Lyra's Oxford didn't really do it for me. Um, and then, like, other things that come to mind, like some of, some of Ira Levin's books, they're quite short, but if they were, that's why they're powerful, is because of their length. Um, so I guess the best I can give you for this is the Discworld series as a whole, uh, a sit which would be a series I needed more from, didn't want to end, and uh, obviously, um, unfortunately, Terry Pratchett passed away, so there is no more Discworld. Question number 10, Buzzfeed Unsolved Postmortem, a book you still have questions about. I don't know, because again, even when you have like open-ended books, part of the fun is that you there isn't an answer, you know? I, I can't remember what it was, but my girlfriend and I both read the same book recently, and she was like, why did the book just end? And I was like, it was an open ending. You're, the reader, the author wanted you as the reader to draw your own conclusion. And she was like, but I need to know what happens. And I was like, that's kind of the point. And she hates it, and I love open-ended books, and I don't need an answer. Um, the thing that comes to mind, actually, I guess, there was a book. Um, it was a uh, Susan Hill book called, I think, The Pure in Heart. And it was really weird, it was like one of her Simon Soraya um, uh, detective novels. But basically there wasn't a solution to the mystery, so it's just like a mystery novel. Except it just ended with no, you know, no denouement. So I still have questions about that. Because I'm like, well, what was the point of that? That's r weird. Question number, question number 11, hot dagger, I guess. I, I, don't, I, I guess I haven't watched enough BuzzFeed Unsolved to know what that means. Um, a trashy fave. All right, um, I don't know, going back to like The Hunger Games or something like that. Um, I don't know, I think this is more, because this was created by the YA room, I guess there's a lot of YA trash out there, you know. I mean, I guess there's a lot of horror trash. I don't know, I can't, I, I don't think any of my fav, uh, favourite books would be counted as trashy, if that makes sense. Not that I'm being snobby or anything like that. Um, it's just like something like, you know, the Discworld books, for example. It's like, you can't really, they're not really trashy, you know? Um, and I've read a lot of trashy horror, like Ass Goblins in Auschwitz. That was all right. I wouldn't call it a favourite. So, um, I guess that's going to be my answer, though, and I can't even remember who, who wrote it. Um, somebody sent it to me. Somebody from uh, Booktube. And I can't remember who now, and I feel bad because I don't remember who sent it to me. All right, and then unofficial question 12, which isn't there, like and subscribe, I guess. Um, tag some people. I'm going to go into my YouTube comments, see who commented recently, and I'm going to list off 10 channels from my most recent comments. So we're going to tag The Honest Book Reviewer, um, Big Hard Books and Classics, Al. We'll tag Charles Heathcote, uh, Venn's Book Corner, Time at Last Book Reviews, Mindy's Book Journey, Joel Swagman, uh, Bad is Rad, One Book, One Review, and Matilda Gothica. Let's do it. Okay, so that was the my take on the BuzzFeed Unsolved tag. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, all the info, etc., is in the description box below. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. Um, uh, let me know what your favourite episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved is, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.